Hey, what's up? I am Matt with Trading Simplified. And in this interview, I got the chance to chat with Jonathan Mays from Restaurant Business News. Now, this is one of two interviews that we did on the National Restaurant Association show. We got the chance to hear some key takeaways from some different varying experiences and put them into one episode of Simplified that you can go back and check out wherever you're seeing this interview. But this is the full uncut interview of my chat with Jonathan Mays. Thanks for uh, having me. I'm uh, Jonathan Mays, Editor-in-Chief of Restaurant Business. Uh, I uh, have uh, worked covering the industry for about 16 years. Uh, my current job is uh, sort of overseeing um, the uh, uh, overseeing restaurant business and, and a team of about 10 people. Uh, I also do a lot of writing myself, so I cover uh, fast food restaurant chains and and finance and franchising uh and you know have a blog and podcasts and all those other happy things nice what's what's the website for the blog uh the the blog is called um the bottom line you can find it on restaurantbusinessonline.com the 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 podcast is uh called a deeper dive uh that's weekly um and that's uh, usually with uh, an interview with a restaurant executive um, or, um, you know, sometimes other people in the industry and experts, economists and things like that. It's a finance blog. and But we cover everything because everything is finance. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so you were recently at uh, the NRA in Chicago. Is that right? I was. Yeah. Tell me if you just had to like, I know it's hard to boil it down, but what's well, give us the highlights. What was what was your top takeaways from NRA? For, some, for somebody who wasn't there, this is somebody yeah. in Florida. They didn't go, but they're interested in what happened there. What were your top takeaways? Well, uh, if uh, you weren't there, um, you missed a lot of robots. Um, you know, <laughs> last uh, really the last few years, you've seen this this influx of robotic and automation type companies um, that are offering their services uh, to restaurants. So you there were a lot of these uh, waiter uh, serving robots uh, were more prevalent this year than last year, and they were pretty prevalent last year. Uh, you saw, uh, you know, a lot of sort of fry making robot type things, um, you know, using sort of the arm, um, the uh, the arms that you were a little bit more popular in in uh, manufacturing plants, for instance, um, that have now been used to like make fries or flip burgers. You still see a, few, a little bit of that. AI was huge. Um, mm. Artificial intelligence was probably the single biggest new trend, newish trend uh, this year, moving very quickly. Um, you know, one of the more fun things we saw was uh, an AI bartender uh, that, uh, would make your drinks with a, a video, um, monitor of a, of a, of a bartender who would talk to you and would exchange witty banter. And it was a little bit, uh, Max Hedrumish, if you understand that reference for me, but, oh, yeah. um, you know, I mean, the drink was pretty good. I was gonna say, did you actually, he actually yeah. made you a drink. Max right. Hedrum made you a drink. Yeah. She, <laughs> she Cecilia was Cecilia. her name. Not, uh, but, uh, she, uh, she, and she made me a pretty good drink. I actually was pretty impressed by the drink. Wow. Um, the, uh, you know, they, they, AI has some work to do, but, you know, artificial intelligence beyond that, uh, on a practical level, you saw a fair bit of, of that, um, and a lot of technology designed to help people be more efficient. Uh, so efficiency was was a huge deal during the conference. On the food front, plant based food was uh, again very very popular. Hmm. Probably a bit of a shift from past years in that more of the companies are um, de-emphasizing any sort of processed nature of their plant based uh, items. So big sense really in the space right now that consumers are shifting away from your um, processed uh, beyond meat, impossible foods type stuff towards, um, you know, things that they would consider to be, you know, you know, less processed, more, you know, real food, if you will. Hmm. Um, and uh, was so there, there was stood out. Was there one of one of those that stood out to you? 
Um, to me, you know, not off the top of my head. There's a, there's a lot, man. It yeah. was like, I mean, and so the big players were still there. I mean, Impossible and Beyond were there, and and a lot of companies were were there. I mean, to me, it was all. Um, I mean, there was just so much. Actually, it was a lot. Um, a lot. It was, you know, the great thing about the show to me every year is that you really do get to see trends like that and. You know, if you remember, you may or may not recall, or anybody may or might not recall years ago when the yogurt boom was was happening and you saw mm. yogurt everywhere, you know, things like that. And 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 really the last couple of years, plant-based food has, has been very, very popular. So it was sort of like, you know, I don't know, like drinking from a fire hose in many respects. Right. So it was all over the place. I mean, I have some concerns, you know, about it, observing the the you know, the industry the way I do. You know, I don't quite know that demand for plant-based items is quite there. Um, but you know, there are a lot of companies that are that are out there offering it. Um, and some are better and some are not. Got it. So it was it was robots, it was AI, it was mm -hmm. plant-based food. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> those those were probably the, the three biggest things that I would yeah. Do you think I mean you, you started this out by saying, you know, you cover finances. Um, cause mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. Ultimately, uh, everyone, everyone doing this is running a business. Is it, are, are, are we, in your opinion, are we at the tipping point where, where that cool robots, cool AI and the efficiencies that introduces, is it, is it worth it? Mm, yeah. I mean, it, it's really, it's just really dependent. I think for the most part, um, uh, you know, automation and AI and things of that nature are, are really going to be piecemeal. Um, I mean, AI is developing very, very rapidly, uh, and it's it's worth that's definitely worth paying attention to. Uh, yeah, and we, there are a lot of companies that are working on that um, on the top end. Uh, you know, the biggest restaurant chains, uh, Yum Brands, McDonald's, Starbucks are all working on it in some form or fashion in in various uh, formats. Um, so AI is coming quickly. It is rapidly improving and, and you'd be naive to, to, to think anything else. So like, that's definitely worth paying attention to, but what kind of functions it changes inside the restaurant is going to be very, um, kind of limited. So it's not, you know, most automation, in the restaurants and most robotics, most robotics, for instance, are not quite there. A lot of people disagree with me. You know, for instance, Sweet Green would definitely disagree with me. Their right. CEO just said that you know they expect all, they wouldn't be surprised if all of their restaurants are automated within five years. Wow. Um, you were you right know, by. I, did you go to this Infinite Kitchen? You were there. I did. I did not. Okay. I did not. Oh, way too far away. I, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Chicago. <laughs> I know. I. Uh, but uh, it was an hour away. Uh, oh, we did it. have people go, and um, uh, you know, they're very impressed. Uh, okay. by by that kitchen and and sweet green has definitely been at the forefront of that particular element um but for the most part you know it's going to take a while before you see a mass amount of automation in the restaurant space uh you'll see it here and there uh piecemeal fashion you know like maybe a fry maker for instance like you've seen with with some chains and in a burger flipper or a chip maker like with chipotle you know, fully automated restaurants, uh, you know, it could take a fair bit. Um, right. And for various reasons, I mean, the capital costs, for instance, the sheer number of restaurants you're talking about uh, would be a very expensive proposition. But you'll start to see a lot. You'll start to see more of that over as we go along because of the amount of effort. I, I think AI is probably the bigger thing because we're already mm. seeing some restaurant chains, you know, Hardee's, Carl's um uh crystal uh checkers and rallies are implementing ai drive throughs so you know you go through the drive through at one of those chains very likely you are going to uh, be greeted by an ai voice rather than um rather than a human being uh wendy's is testing it oh, yeah. cecilia at the yeah yeah it's gonna Hardy's be drive -thru. cecilia yeah 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 and then, <laughs> you know if you go on tiktok you'll see some famous mistakes that they make and things like that um, so, uh, yeah. you know, so it's definitely out there, definitely in the wild and, and, you know, that'll take a while to see some real improvement and see, uh, see it really adopted on mass, but, and there are a lot of considerations with these things, but it's definitely coming.
Got it. What do you think was the biggest trend specifically for, I guess, an operator for someone who's just like, you know, we've got to execute. Um, I, I, I'm an operator of a restaurant or a multitude of restaurants. What do you think was kind of the, the biggest takeaway or trend for an operator? Yeah, I would, I would, I would go back to the efficiency thing. So there were a lot of everybody. Well, not everybody, but a large number of of vendors who were there were were promoting this idea that you could do more with less. And so, I mean, if you think about it, it makes a ton of sense. If yeah. you you know the last um, you know last year we had a historic, um, we had uh, you know, well two year. Two years ago, we had this bad, bad pandemic. Then last year, we had inflation and a, a historic labor shortage. Um, you had food costs go through the roof, and so com- so operators, you know, profit margins took a big hit last year. And operators this year are trying to still work their way through that and and get their their margins back to where they are comfortable with. And so, you know, there were a number of options there. Um, you know, various you know, various pieces of technology, for instance, but even, um, uh, you know, you know, packaging and things like that, just a lot of companies were really promoting efficiency and, you know, a lot of, well, a lot of equipment, for instance. I mean, there, you know, Mm. a lot of companies were advertising your ability to do more with less. That was probably by far the biggest uh, trend from an operations standpoint to me is that there was just a ton of options in that, in that, on that front. That makes sense. It's ultimately about efficiency, which which robots and AI fall into that category. Um, it, but there's yeah. there's a lot more operational efficiencies beyond just robots and AI oh, yeah. that they were promoting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you're you know, um, you know, if you have a, a, the equipment that's just more efficient, that waste, you know, produces less waste. I mean, one of the more interesting things, honestly, honestly one of the more interesting AI things was an AI garbage can at Coke. That Coke is testing an AI garbage hmm. can. Now, I don't really think. That's not really efficiency, but yeah, it's just uh, um, you know, it it just shows you that like com- you know they're 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 thinking about almost everything when it comes to technology. But <laughs> that um, sounds like Doc Brown. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was weird. The trash it was turns weird. to fusion for the yeah. uh, to fuel the DeLorean. Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> it was actually quite almost not quite like that, but I mean, <laughs> yeah, kind of nice. But, yeah, well, one one more question for you, Jonathan is a. Uh, What's one thing, even shifting gears from NRA, but it could be it could be associated to that. Just in your opinion, as someone who talks to experts about restaurants and finances, um, what's one thing that you think every restaurant operator should be doing right now that they're mostly not do they're most likely not doing to drive sales or reduce costs? Uh, well, probably the biggest thing they could do right now is is watch their price increases. Um, that's what I would suspect. I think um, now that might not necessarily drive sales as much as anything. It might protect your sales going forward. I think there is a lot of consumer um, frustration about um, inflation at restaurants. I mean, there's a lot of consumer frustration about inflation, period. Uh, but restaurants are one of those things that people could cut back on or change their behavior if they perceive it to be too expensive. Once consumers, once you start thinking, hey, this restaurant that I go to once a week is costing me a lot more than it did last year, you might think of rethink how often you go to that restaurant. And I, you know, my sense is that consumers are thinking about that an awful lot. The other thing I know is that um, um, the retail uh, food industry, grocers and, and C stores, you know they they have really pulled back on price increases in the past several months, mm-hmm. and restaurant inflation is now uh, now exceeds uh, grocery inflation, and that gap is going to continue to widen over the next several months. As that does, consumers are going to continue to notice that difference. I know that grocers are actively targeting restaurants for business. So they believe that they can target restaurant customers for their business. And from a restaurant standpoint, I don't know that from a margin standpoint, you can really afford to discount a lot because you're still trying to recover from last year's margin challenges. 
but I also believe that it's time to hold back on any type of price increases. By far, that's probably my biggest um, recommendation uh, because I I I think that it could be difficult to maintain traffic. And we're already seeing that in some sectors. Family dining, in particular, has started to see some real pullback in traffic, uh, yeah. for instance. And so, um, you know, if if this consumer frustration builds, if consumers cut back on spending like a lot of people think they will, then you could really have, um, you know, you, you know, you can have a, a substantial shift and. And and that could cause problems for any restaurant chain that does not have a really good value perception, and so that's probably my biggest recommendation. That makes a sure lot of not. sense. Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, do you think you started by saying to be? I, th- I think you said thoughtful about your price increases. Yes. Do you think just be thoughtful or, or hold off? Well, I'd probably hold off, but I mean, sometimes if you have to take them, you have to take them. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm not going to tell people like, you know, don't raise your prices if you're really, you know, I mean, if you're, if you're a restaurant company and you believe that um, you have enough consumer demand and you have a need for the margin, um, then I would, you know, I would be thoughtful about it and be, but, you know, and you could probably still do that. Um, that would be true in any, any economy, but uh, for the most part, I would probably hold off, um, if I could and be cautious about any further price increases at, at the very least, um, simply because that's why, I, I mean, I, I just think that the consumer is tired of how much they're paying to eat out at a restaurant. Yeah. And I know I am. I mean, I, I have I have a friend who routinely gives me a rundown of how much he spent at whatever fast food restaurant he goes to, and sometimes casual dining. Um, I I see a lot of talk about it about how much people are paying at certain restaurant chains, in particular, um, how much they pay for a meal. You you see this quite a bit, and you know, yeah, and yeah. so eventually, eventually, they start changing the, their behavior. That's always true. I've got three kids and they're, tr- they're at the age where they're transitioning from the kids menu to the adults menu. Oh, and I'm like, Oh, Oh man, <laughs> that, that hurts. <laughs> Are there any of them boys? Uh, one, one boy. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah he all eats. right. Well, wait a few years and until they, and well, wait a couple of years probably until, until, and then your grocery bills will take off. Oh man. Great. Good to yeah. hear. Well, Jonathan, thank you so much for chatting with me. I really appreciate your insight and your expertise. Um, and we'd, I'd love to chat with you again in the future if you're, if you're open to it. Awesome. Love it.